those of you in the room, feel free to raise your hand and someone will bring you a mic. Uh, last time we talked, we were getting uh, very sporadic data back and uh, trying to understand the situation of the mission, but uh, we've conducted a very successful mission to this point and we expect to uh, go to the completion of the mission as planned uh, with a little treat in store for us as we go forward beyond that over the next uh, sec uh, two and three weeks. Currently, um, in the Commission Control Room, Odysseus continues to generate solar power. Uh, we are projecting a uh, time where the solar power generation will not allow OD to, uh, to continue sending down telemetry, uh, but we will put OD to sleep um, and expect to, uh, to wake, wake him up here in the next two or three weeks for a development test objective, uh, which is actually to see if we can, uh, when the sun illuminates the solar panel again, can, we will we get a signal back from this uh, from this lander, and so we're excited about that uh, point. Um, flight controllers are uh, analyzing all the data that's coming down. I th we've gotten data from all of the payloads, um, commercial and NASA payloads to date. Uh, what we've gotten in terms of data on the vehicle is a tremendous amount of the guidance navigation control data, all the propulsion data, all the performance data for the vehicle that will allow us to completely reconstruct the mission and tell you uh, all of the uh, idiosyncrasies uh, that went on throughout the mission, and we'll do a mission reconstruction, and then evaluation on how the performance of this mission will play itself forward to missions two and three and subsequent missions. I would actually say that we've had 13 amazing days, so we are at no lucky number 13, and instead of ending up with a few bytes of data, which was the baseline goal for us, we've gotten over 50 megabytes of data, which uh, we went from basically a cocktail straw of data coming back to a boba tea sized straw of data coming back. So we're all very excited now that we've gotten a lot of data. How much time does Odysseus have left? Well, I think uh, what we're going to do is uh, kind of tuck Odie in for the, for the cold night of the moon and uh, see if we can't wake, wake him up here when we get uh, the solar noon here in about three weeks. So um, we know uh, through that we are degrading in power and we expect that within about, expect about five hours or so from now is when we will be at a point where we will no longer have commanding or telemetry coming down. Uh, we are going to leave the computers and the power system in a place where we can wake it up and do this development test objective uh, to actually try to uh, ping it uh, with an antenna f and see if we can't wake it up uh, once it gets power again. We're confident that when the sun comes back up over Odysseus that the solar arrays will energize and they'll send power. The real question is, are the batteries there to receive that power and pass it on? And then will the electronics within our, our computer and radio have withstood that deep cold and not, not basically cracked uh, under the thermal stress? Um, in the Commission Control Room, Odysseus continues to generate solar power. Uh, we are projecting a uh, time where the solar power generation will not allow OD to, uh, to continue sending down telemetry, uh, but we will put OD to sleep um, and expect to, uh, to wake, wake him up here in the next two or three weeks for a development test objective, uh, which is actually to see if we can, uh, when the sun illuminates the solar panel again, can, we will we get a signal back from this uh, from this lander, and so we're excited about that uh, point. Flight controllers are uh, analyzing all the data that's coming down. I th we've gotten data from all of the payloads, um, commercial and NASA payloads to date. We're confident that when the sun comes back up over Odysseus, that the solar arrays will energize and they'll send power. The real question is, are the batteries there to receive that power and pass it on? And then will the electronics within our, our computer and radio 
have withstood that deep cold and not, not basically cracked uh, under the thermal stress. But we are intended to land right around 1724. That's 524 p.m. Central Time. But know that there is some give and take. We're also expecting, plan for, and train for a little bit of loss of communication during this process. 1,000 meters call out from NDL that is coming from flight management. And again, that's the time of touchdown. It may take some time to actually confirm the status of the lander. And in this process, we do have a deployment of Eagle Cam attempting to take the third person images of Nova C going down to the lunar surface. We are inside of one minute, Gary. All stations, this is uh, Mission Director on IM-1. We're evaluating uh, how we can refine that signal and uh, dial in the pointing for our dishes. What we can confirm, without a doubt, is our equipment is on the surface of the moon and we are transmitting. So congratulations, IM team. We'll see how much more we can get from that. Houston. Odysseus has found his new home. Uh, what an outstanding effort. I know this was a nail biter, but we are on the, si on the surface and we are transmitting and uh, welcome to the moon. They're monitoring every step and all the data coming from Nova C ahead of PDI, which is scheduled just a little bit after 5.11 p.m. Central Time. This is an autonomous lunar lander, and flight controllers are monitoring communications and tracking the progress right along with the public right now with us. Nova C has the helm. It Cheers erupted in Houston's mission control after the first American moon landing in more than half a century on Thursday. And it was done by a private sector spacecraft, the first ever to touch the lunar surface. The uncrewed six-legged lander named Odysseus was developed by Intuitive Machines, a company based in Texas. What we can confirm, without a doubt, is our equipment is on the surface of the moon and we are transmitting. So congratulations, IM team. We'll see how much more we can get from that. Odysseus's landing came after a nail-biting final approach and descent, and there was a problem with the spacecraft's autonomous navigation system. Engineers had to deploy an untested workaround at the 11th hour. Then there was a radio blackout, which was anticipated, and it took time for mission control to re-establish contact. When communications did come back, the signal was faint, but it confirmed that Odysseus had touched down. Still, NASA and the company said it left mission control uncertain as to its precise condition and position. The spacecraft was not designed to provide live video of the event. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson called the historic feat a triumph. Odysseus has taken the moon. This feat is a giant leap forward for all of humanity. And liftoff. It took around a week for Odysseus to reach the moon after launching from Earth on a rocket from Elon Musk's company SpaceX. The lander carries an array of scientific instruments and technology demonstrations for NASA and several commercial customers. It's designed to operate for seven days on solar energy before the sun sets over the South Pole landing site. NASA says the data collected will help it prepare to return astronauts to the moon later this decade as part of a long-term sustained initiative of lunar exploration and a stepping stone toward eventual human flights to Mars.